Welcome back friends. I recorded the video about dative or coordinate covalent bond, but it had some of the problems. So I am very sorry for my students who did not see the video and that mistake was out of my consciousness. So I didn't knew that the video was not there in my channel. So I am forced to record this video again for the advantage of my students who are following me in this channel so as to understand different concepts in general chemistry and in chemistry at all. And let I tell you good news that now I am back and we shall go not only to discuss about the general chemistry, we shall go to discuss even the other topics in chemistry such as physical chemistry and even other topics. And furthermore in this channel I will be uploading also the videos of biology physics and even advanced mathematics and BAM. I am Dr. Mlela conducting this lecture and today we are going to look about the dative or coordinate covalent bond. So as we discussed in the previous videos about the, the other types of covalent bonds which are polar covalent bonds and non-polar covalent bonds and we saw that he, both polar and non-polar covalent bonds they are formed by the sharing of electrons. So even here, the covalent bonds are formed by the sharing of electrons. Kwa hiyo popote pa unaposikia covalent bond inatengenezo by sharing of electrons. But we have a distinct characteristics of these bonds. What is the distinct characteristics or a distinct feature of dative covalent bond? Dative covalent bond, unaposikia tu dative or coordinate covalent bond, utofote yake mkubwa ni kwamba they share the electrons, they are donated by a single atom. So only a single atom donate electron and another atom provide the vacant orbital. So if you remember our electronic configuration, our general chemistry in the part of electronic configuration in my previous videos, I said that the orbital can appear like this. We can draw the orbital like this way. This can be the appearance of the orbital like a box. So during the dative body formation, this empty orbit is provided by one atom and another atom come here just to provide the pair of electron. So the shell of, of electron occur as in other types of covalent bond, but the major difference here is that the shared electrons they are donated by a single atom and another atom provide a vacant orbit. So by definition, that bond is the type of covalent bond in which bond electrons are donated only one atom are donated only by one atom so only one atom donates electrons now for the dative bond to be formed there are some of the conditions which are very important to know them because they normally ask in the exam what are the conditions for for the dative covalent bond to be formed so conditions 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 for dative covalent bond to be formed we have two major conditions our first condition is that one of the bonding atoms should have a lone pair. One of the bonding atoms should have a lone pair. So one of the bonding atom of the bonding atom atom should have should have lone pair. Have lone pair. Now what is the lone pair? When the video is repeated to say a lone pair is the pair of outermost electrons which is not used in the bond formation. So sometimes atoms like chlorine, it has seven electrons in the outermost shell. And you can see that if it donates, if it shares maybe one electron with the hydrogen, it shares one electron with the hydrogen to form hydrogen chloride. So here, this bond is formed by the sharing of electron. Just the hydrogen shares one, one electron with choline. So what happens here means that only one outermost electron of choline is shared with only one outermost electron of hydrogen. So the six electrons remain unused and they do not involve in the normal covalent bond formation. So the six electrons is equal to three pairs. So for example, chlorine has three lone pair. 
And as we discussed before, that the group five element, group five element, they have one lone pair. Then group six element, they have two lone pair. And group seven element, they have three lone pairs. While group zero element, that, which are group four, they have no lone pairs. So one among the the bonding atom should have lone pair. And saying that, that is simply means that the one among the bonding atom should should be a nonmetal, which has a lone pair. And a lone pair of electron is a pair of electron which cannot take part in the normal covalent bond formation. That's the simple definition, and you will see this in the notes which there in my telegram group. The link is in the description below. And the second condition that atom should have a vacant orbital, a second atom. Now the first atom should have lone pair, and the second atom, the second atom should have vacant orbital. Now what what do we mean when we are saying vacant orbital? Vacant simply means empty. Empty. Yan tupu. Kwa yo obito yetu, ambayo ntakiwe kwenye atom, iwe tupu kama hivi. Iwe haina kitu. Ili ule atom aje na loni pe yake, kiwe kapa, iwe naonekana kama hivi. Kwa yo, ichi vacant obito in act kama ni empty room. Ni kama chumba ambacho kiko tupu, electrons inakuja kukaa mle. So it provides space for the electrons to stay. And now, let's see the examples. As we have already seen the conditions that one of the atoms should have lone pair and the second atom should have the vacant orbital. If an, if any atom have vacant orbital, we call it as electron deficiency molecule, if the atom is in the molecule. So we may discuss it later about the electron deficient molecules. But let's see a few examples of the of the dative bonds. Uh, my first example is ammonium, ammonium iron, and let's see how the dative bond is formed here. So how is ammonium formed? Uh, the reaction of formation of ammonium iron is the reaction between ammonium, ammonia, and hydrogen iron to form ammonia. So as you can see here, is the combination between ammonia and hydrogen iron to form ammonium. So let's draw this in a structure and then you shall see what how does the dative covalent bond formed. So we have nitrogen, hydrogen, then hydrogen, then hydrogen. This is your ammonia. And as you can see in this ammonia, these three bonds they are polar covalent bonds because we have a net dipole moment pulling the electrons to the more electronegative atom. And according to the, our concept, this is the polar molecule because the dipole moment they can't cancel each other. Now the nitrogen here has a single lone pair because it is group five element. As I told you that group five element they have a single lone pair. So having this single lone pair, hydrogen, if we draw if we, we draw the electronic configuration of hydrogen, hydrogen electronic configuration appears like this. And we have only a single electron within the orbital. Now taking hydrogen ion means this one electron is emitted and then hydrogen ions will appear to have electronic configuration like this. This is one S. And it is empty, it has nothing. So here, when we are adding hydrogen, when we are adding hydrogen, this hydrogen, remember, it has as an empty orbital like this. So what happens here is that the lone pair from nitrogen go to stay in the empty room of the orbital provided by the hydrogen ion. And the resulting molecule appears like nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Then here we are drawing this arrow indicating the direction of the donated electrons. And then we are drawing again hydrogen. But what happens here that the neutral condition of nitrogen are these 
two electrons. So donating these electrons to hydrogen, the hydrogen becomes neutral and then the nitrogen becomes positively charged. Eventually, the whole molecule of ammonium is considered as positively charged. However, here it doesn't appear well, but we are drawing a positive charge here in this top right corner. In this top right corner, we are drawing a positive charge, indicating a whole molecule is positively charged because of the central atom, which is nitrogen. Another example of the dative covalent bond is hydronium. Hydronium ion. Hydronium ion is formed when water combined with hydrogen ion to form H3O then positive. Now if we are drawing this, it is oxygen, then hydrogen, then hydrogen. And oxygen has two lone pairs because it is group six element. So if you are adding hydrogen ion, which has empty orbital, the resulting molecule can be drawn as oxygen, then hydrogen, then hydrogen, then here only one lone pair remain because one lone pair will be donated to hydrogen. And then here we can draw like this, you have hydrogen. This oxygen becomes positively charged because of the of the electrons donated to hydrogen, and then the whole molecule becomes positively charged. <coughs> Sorry. And um, let me give you the the last example of the dative covalent bond. So, for example, here the dative covalent bond is this one. Dative covalent bond and in this molecule here the the dative covalent bond is this one dative covalent bond and let's see the the last example on the dative covalent bond is the bond between between boron fluoride it is boron fluoride and ammonia. So boron fluoride appears like this and ammonia appears like this to form a molecule which appears as F3B then NH3. So what happens here is that the structure of ammonia remains the same. The structure of ammonia remains the same and then we are adding boron with 3 fluorine. So here, the boron is electron deficient atom and has the vacant orbital. So the lone pair near hydrogen in nitrogen is donated to boron. And what happens in the resulting molecule is that nitrogen, then hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Then here, it is boron, fluoride, fluoride, fluoride. And the direction of electrons is like that one. Here is your dative covalent covalent bond. So <clears throat> that's all about the dative covalent bond. Most of times in this question, they they may ask you to they may they may ask you to to define and then to give example or to do the structure of some of the that of covalent bond. So let's finish this lecture by discussing the properties of covalent bond. Uh, the first property, properties of the covalent bond, properties of covalent covalent bonds. Uh, the first property, they cannot conduct electricity and heat because covalent compound have no free electrons and ions. However, a thumbsing to note here that the polar covalent bonds have ability to conduct electricity and heat because they dissociate they dissociate in water into ions. For example, hydrogen chloride can dissociate in water to form hydrogen and the chlorine ions. And remember this is the polar polar covalent bond. So polar covalent bonds they have 
remain covalent. Polar covalent bonds, they have a way to dissociate in water and to conduct exist. But what you should know here is that these, which I discussed here, they are general properties of the covalent compounds. Another thing, they have low melting and boiling points because force of attraction is between the atoms is weak. Low melting and boiling points, that's true. They are insoluble in water, not all of them. Polar covenant, they, they are normal soluble and they contain distinctive molecules. So that's the end of this lecture. And as I told you before that I'm very sorry because of the confusion of this lecture. After this lecture, you are required to discuss about the bond parameters, which are bond length, bond strength, and bond length, bond strength, and the bond angle, which I already discussed the, in my series of videos of atomic structure. So, <clears throat> one thing that I can tell you is that subscribe to the channel for more updates. And this topic can 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 be finished soon and we shall jump to other topics. Thank you everybody. Nice studies.